part and Ricardo, please take the stage. Thank you, Andrew, so much for the invitation and apologies for the time zone change scheduling mix up. I'm happy to be here. And I thought I would start this talk by um, thanking everyone that is online um, listening. And I wish we were all in the same room and have insightful discussions. So I will present in some of our ongoing work with uh, Pauline Bernard at Means Paris Tech uh, on observers for hydrodynamical systems. I'll tell you a little bit about how we model them and how we design them, and then give you some insight about some structural properties like necessary conditions and um, properties of the solutions that are involved in this type of problems. Uh, for the ones that haven't been to Santa Cruz, and I think some of you have, uh, this is how our backyard looks like, and we would love to have you here visit us anytime. Uh, let me start by telling you a little bit about what we mean by hybrid systems, because there are many ways to model them, to reason about them, and, and to analyze them. Uh, this is an example where you have multiple manipulators uh, reaching close contact with an object. Uh, when the contact occurs, there's typically a transition in the controller. There may be a non-smooth behavior in the dynamics of the system, but there's typically a transition in the controller from going from uh, no contact to contact. Uh, systems that in incur impacts, like a juggling system that you see right here, um, typically are modeled with uh, a system model that has continuous evolution and then every time there is an impact, there is an abstraction of that evolution that corresponds to a very rapid change. And that is typically what we call a jump in the system. Uh, circuits are also systems that involve some sort of non-smoothness. Uh, the, the, the model of an inverter, like you see right here, to convert a DC voltage to an AC voltage is typically a non-smooth system, it's a switch system. But the control algorithm that you might use, for instance, here, this is one of our control algorithms for inversion, might make decisions on switching boundaries uh, with hysteresis in order to guarantee that a particular pseudo sinusoidal trajectory is generated. And as you see right here, uh, there is a uh, under the hood, there is a logic variable that keeps track of where in the state corresponding to these uh, surfaces, the state of the system might be. When we think about in general hybrid systems and, and in a theoretical framework, as we're going to be talking about today, we're looking at models that are somewhat combining uh, continuous variables and discrete variables. And one of the initial model frameworks that are in literature is what is essentially coming out of finite state machines, is the addition of differential equations to different modes of operation for the systems. This gave rise to a very powerful modeling framework called hybrid automata. Uh, we also thinking of situations where the impulses, uh, the times at what the jumps I mentioned today might occur, are given by these input differential equations. And, and this is what you see right here uh, in, in the screen. Um, we're also looking at operations on measures, sets with uh, discontinuities, apparent, apparently in, in optimal control, these appear very naturally, uh, where there is a, a atomic measure, an impulsive measure, uh, introducing impulses in the system. And there are models of uh, systems with unilateral constraint and such that uh, we might be interested in the context of uh, impact systems. What we would like to focus here and model here are rather general and models that are finite dimensional and that are inspired from these type of uh, hybrid systems that I will be presenting to. And when we've been working with this over the years, and this is a, a modern framework that we developed with Rafael Gobel and Andy Till, we were trying to make hybrid systems to look as much as possible as continuous time systems and a discrete time systems combined. And as you see right here, what we see is given an initial condition. If we are looking at a continuous time system, we expect trajectories to be like this uh, blue trajectory that you see right here. If you're looking at these discrete time systems, we look, look at trajectories that might be with this uh, sequence of points that are evolving over time, generated by some sort of an object. And then when we're thinking about hybrid systems, we're thinking essentially about the combination of this. We would like to have trajectories of the system that might evolve continuously and at times jump, and then this uh, evolution might continue. There might be a situation where you have uh, multiple jumps at the same time instant, and then the evolution continues. So we're interested in these type of systems that are 
combining continuously changing variables and discreetly or abrupt changes in other variables. And this might emerge because of uh, the combination of logic variables, changes in the environments, events, and failures. And over the years, we've been trying to understand uh, deeply how to systematically design these systems with some robustness guarantees. Uh, you can certainly realize that if the events are creating large deviations of the state, essentially jumps, a small perturbations on the initial condition might also create a large error on the trajectories um, when you compare the amperture and the perturbed trajectory. And that's one of the, the critical things to, to understand. And the way we've been working on this, again, with a number of collaborators, is to understand how to capture these dynamics um, with some uh, tractable finite dimensional models and then analyze these properties using uh, infinitesimal conditions, typically Lyapunov functions, barrier functions, and this such. So this is essentially a summary of the things that we've been doing over the years. We have a book with Rafael Gobel in detail on the analysis of closed hybrid systems, no inputs. Um, more recently, we made some effort and uh, published another book on the analysis of systems with inputs and how to design systematically this kind of control algorithms for these plants. And then um, some of our efforts have also taken us over the direction of how do we actually compute, how do we simulate these systems and develop some um, simple software tools for these type of problems. So coming back to the question of what a hybrid dynamical system with this uh, rather brief introduction, let me say that we are looking at systems that are modeled what we call uh, hybrid equations or hybrid inclusions, where we have, if you're talking about a plant, a state Z, an input U, and we have the dynamics of the system that are given by, as I said, these equations or inclusions. And these maps that we have right here define the differential equation on the top. Uh, on the next line, it defines a difference equation. And this essentially governs the evolution of the trajectory or the solution to my system over, over time, which now will be hybrid. Now, the key point that we want to make is that whether continuous evolution or flow, which is in blue, or whether jumps or the discrete evolution is allowed, it corresponds to whether the state and the input, if there is one, belongs to a particular set, which we call the flow set and the jump set. And these trajectories or solutions are parameterized by hybrid time, which is given by a pair T and J. T is the natural or the ordinary time of continuous time systems, and J is a counter, which counts essentially how many jumps, how many events have occurred over, over the evolution of the solution to the system. So now we are looking at hybrid plants and we're looking at solutions the domain over which these solutions are defined are typically given by intervals of flow indexed by the number of jumps. And see right here, there is an interval of flow if T1 is larger than zero with zero jump. And then this um, might be extended by another interval of flow with a jump equal to one as the jump counter increases from zero to one. And then this trend continues over and over. Uh, there might be situations where this Tj and Tj plus one is equal, are equal to each other, so it corresponds to a jump, uh, a subsequent, subsequent jump with a flow in between. And this series or um, sequence of intervals might actually converge to a finite length interval, and that corresponds to what we typically call Zeno. One comment that I would like to make is that the controller um, that might be used or the plan itself might have a state that uh, includes logic variables, memory, uh, timers, and we're going to show you a little bit about those uh, in the coming um, slides. Now, a hybrid system that satisfies certain conditions, which we call the hybrid basic condition, is what we call a well-posed hybrid system. Uh, it will give us an opportunity to relate asymptotic stability to robust asymptotic stability. And those conditions uh, on the surface are simply saying that the set CP and DP need to be closed sets and that the maps FP and GP, the flow map and the jump map needs to be continuous, which when we are talking about single value maps, this is a simple continuous map. But when we are talking about set value maps, we are looking at outer semi-continuous maps with uh, locally bounded values. So putting all this together, we are thinking about giving an initial condition for my plant in this case and an input, which is not drawn here. We're looking at the evolution of this hybrid arc which corresponds to the um, solution to the system. Z, a hybrid arc, essentially is a function that every time that you fix J, you have uh, a good enough derivative. So we assume that is locally absolutely continuous over the interval of flow. And now when we put this model or this semantics, if you will, 
on, on, on the screen with a trajectory as I showed before, then essentially the flow of the solution will need to occur whenever the um, state is in the projection of the flow set on the state space. And then every time that there's a jump, you would need to have the case that the state, and in the case of a plant, is the input as well, belongs to the jump set. And as you see right here, in general terms, these sets, CP and DP, flow set and jump set, might have some sort of overlap. Typically, there is at least a, a measure zero overlap in order to have evolution that is uh, allowing both continuous and discrete evolution, but typically, especially because of perturbations, this overlap might be significant, and and we need to treat that from the very beginning that correspond to what we call um, non-uniqueness of solutions in the type of systems. So, um, we are thinking also about closing the loop, right? So, when we assign the input to the plan, we typically arrive to this closed system, and this is a class of system that we have studied, and is in that book I mentioned with uh, Rafael Govelandi Till, where now we have a closed loop system when we have um, a, a, a flow set C, a, a flow map F, a jump set D, and a jump uh, map G. And we are thinking about now solutions to this system, as I said earlier, well, now that we have no input, it is probably straightforward to think about this. And we have a condition during flows that this um, hybrid arc needs to be satisfied. In other words, need to satisfy the differential uh, inclusion uh, corresponding to the flows and the constraint given by the flow set. And similarly, it needs to satisfy that every time that there is a jump, the state belongs to the jump set. And the new value of the state is given by a point in the image of the jump map evaluated at the current solution value. Um, this type of hybrid systems uh, lead to uh, an interesting set of uh, solutions. And, and, uh, and they are summarized here. You end up with certainly situations where if the jump set is empty, then you get a continuous type behavior. So you recover continuous time systems. If the flow set is empty, then you recover discrete time type of evolution. Then you have combinations where eventually the solutions might become continuous, eventually it might become discrete. And then one of the unique uh, features or behavior that you might get from the system is the systems where you have a solution that is essentially having infinitely many jumps in its domain, but the uh, amount of flow is bounded. And that's what we call a scene of behavior. Okay. So there are a number of examples I don't think I want to go into a lot of detail here about uh, uh, examples, but um, there is a the, the canonical temperature control problem where you have a state of a plant that is uh, corresponding to the temperature, and there is an input that corresponds to the outside temperature, and another input that corresponds to controlling the temperature in, let's say, a room. Uh, here you have a differential equation with constraints. That's essentially the, the, the part that corresponds to um, the model of the plant. The plant is not hybrid in that case, there are no jumps. Uh, but now we can think about a situation where you say that um, you would like to change the temperature, um, you would like to have some sort of a control um, right here. You would like to have a given uh, temperature minimum, temperature maximum. You would like to actually regulate that temperature, and that typically requires switching, especially if the um, control of the temperature corresponds to on and off. Another situation that is more prevalent is a situation where you have a nonlinear system and a controller, and now you would like to have some sort of uh, sample and hold behavior for the control of the system, which is you know prevalent in all control systems these days because they are computer control. And then what happens here is that what we need to add is essentially a mechanism to sample the output of the nonlinear system and then process that, create essentially a control input and then apply to the nonlinear system. And that typically requires a timer, uh, as you see here, tau, and it requires a memory state to memorize um, what kind of um, information has been sent. Now, in general, this framework of hybrid system is, again, as I said, for finite dimensional, uh, for the case of the plan with input, for the case of the closed loop system is, you know, the resulting closed loop, but it allows to model a number of systems, like for instance, allows to model switch systems under particular switch signals, where the sigma signal here can be generated by a hybrid model. Uh, it also allows for impulsive system models, uh, where now the times are somewhat scheduled, 
and those can be modeled in the in the system as typically as in the jump set and also allows to characterize uh, models of the form of hybrid automata which are very prevalent and very useful for for applications especially for uh, implementation uh, i would like to switch gears a little bit here uh, after this introduction to hybrid systems to what i like to present today and again this is for with pauline bernard and then the understanding of how do we now from measurements of the uh, a function of the state of the plan here why how can we guarantee that the state uh, is estimated okay so we would like to create essentially an estimate here called c hat of the state Z of this system, where now Z might be evolving continuously and discreetly, and uh, that's a challenge. It's okay. So what we would like to have is, an in, as in any other observer uh, setting for continuous or discrete time system, we would like to have that the error C hat minus Z converges to zero, either in finite time or in the limit. So we would like some sort of attractivity property. And then we would also like to have that if this error is initially small, then it remains small. So we would like that type of um, construction and, and that type of certificate. Uh, we will have a certificate that provides that type of property. So the problem is essentially is to find this observer, which is an algorithm, which I'm going to call H hat, that uses the following information. It measures the, the output of the plant. It measures the input of the plant at all hybrid times. And then it has a model of, of the plant, right? So let's initialize our setting where we know the plant model. And again, the model is as good as it probably might get. And then uh, with that, we would like to design um, an algorithm that again interconnects to the plant and creates this estimate. Okay. One thing that we want to simplify right here, especially for, for the interest of time and also for what we know so far, is that uh, it might as well be the case that we, we forget about the input to the plant because we typically measure it, we typically measure and cancel it in the standard observer design, uh, and we are not going to deal with mismatches here, so we're going to take Essentially, we're going to label this system that we would like to estimate the state of as calligraphed H. Uh, this could be just a plant, it could be something else. And we're going to use the state just to be somewhat compatible with what many of you might know as X. And now the estimate that I would like to create is this X hat, right? So the same thing is here. This is like it's essentially reproducing what I had before. X hat, I would like that so that X hat minus X somewhat gets a small. Okay, so that's the problem. That's the setting we're going to go from here, and we're going to take some special cases because this general problem there is no uh, solution yet. Okay, so there are very specific cases, in my opinion, very important advances in that direction. So what do we know about observer for uh, hybrid systems? Let me just list some of the articles that we've been getting inspiration from. This is not an exhaustive list, but there is certainly a study of observability in a number of settings, a study of observability in a switch system, a study of observability in impulsive and linear, uh, or hybrid systems have linear maps. Um, there's certainly an interest in understanding the mode of a system that is a switch system using observers. So this is typically called mode location observers. Uh, there's also interest in estimating the switch signal, and that is certainly a very important problem. So there are these classes of systems which have hybrid flavor, which are very interesting, and there are very important results in that direction. There are some more recent results that we we really like. So for instance, there is a, an article by Fournier all where there are systems with impacts. And now the impacts now um, are essentially of, of mechanical system type, typical similar to bouncing ball systems. And I'm, I'm getting some. Okay. Um, right. Um, so we, we have these type of systems that are billiard mechanical type, and there is a very interesting idea there on how to actually estimate the state without creating issues when the jumps occur, <clears throat> which will occur necessarily at different times between the, the plant and the observer. And there's another article that uses a similar kind of trick, but extends it to another class, larger class of system, which is using the idea of gluing domains, which essentially removes this, um, this mismatch, which I'm gonna mention, and again, it applies to a particular class of systems, and this is work by Kim and, and co-authors. So how do we go about modeling a observer applied to a hybrid plant? So here is one approach to do that. We have a hybrid system that I mentioned earlier. 
Uh, this could be again as a, a planned state X. And then what we are dreaming of is to finding a flow map F hat, a flow set C hat, a jump map G hat, and a jump set D hat, and an output H hat that builds this now hybrid observer, okay? All that this system measures is the output of this plant, okay? And essentially, as we all probably know and work on observers, this defines an interconnection between the plant or the system I would like to estimate the state of and the algorithm of the observer that I am actually um, designing myself. And again, I would like this X hat uh, to converge in some sense to um, the state X, okay? So, if now we think about what happens here, we have an interconnection of two systems. Uh, one system is to some extent uh, without the observer is its own system. It creates its own evolution of its trajectories and its solutions. Okay, so there is no reason to expect that the uh, domain of the solution for this system matches the domain of the solution to this system when they are disconnected. So when we connect them, we can actually model them and come up with a unified to some extent, notion of solution, okay? But we need to handle the situation where one system jumps and the other one doesn't jump, or when one system stops evolving continuously and the other system continues or wants to continue evolving continuously, okay? So a way to model this interconnection, which is a cascade interconnection, is by combining essentially the evolution of the system. So what do we have here? So this CL is for, closed loop, but necessarily not necessarily a closed loop. You can think about this as a closed loop, but it's just an interconnection. What we are saying here is that the state of the observer, we can call it chi, and the state of the plant or of the system I want to estimate, which is X, needs to both belong to their respective flow sets, okay? So the intention is that if none of the system can, can flow, then the system should stop flowing as an interconnection. But if both can flow, then this, the, um, the system should be allowed to flow. Okay? So that gives rise to the closed loop flow map of this uh, interconnection. The situation that is left to handle is the situation when one system jumps and the other one does not. Okay? So for that, we build this uh, jump map, uh, so excuse me, jump set right here that is the union of two sets. One is the one collecting the situations when the, um, the system calligraph H might jump and the other one when the system uh, calligraph H hat, the observer might jump, okay? So parsing these two conditions essentially leads to a jump map that will essentially define how the state of the interconnection should be reset. So certainly if the um, system calligraph H is the one that jumps, then what happens is that X is the one that gets reset according to the jump map from calligraph H, while the observer state does not get reset. And the other situation is right here. Now, when both of them happen, then suddenly we reset the two of them, okay? So what happens here is automatically you realize that you have a situation where, you know, the plant might be reset, the state might not be reset, and then uh, it's up to us how do we design these D hat and C hat sets so that this maybe happens very close to each other so the error doesn't get too large. Another challenge, one of the challenges of observers. So with that, we, we can formulate the problem um, of the observer, which we call it problem O. And that consists of finding these objects such that the zero estimation error is asymptotically stable. And what do we mean by zero estimation error? Well, let me just make a comment here. If we are thinking of the situation where the estimate is equal to the state of the observer, which is not always the case, it might be a higher dimensional state that creates the estimate, but let's assume that situation, the set that we would like to um, render to some asymptotic stability type property is uh, the, what we call the zero estimation uh, error set. It's a set that needs to collect a number of points. First needs to collect the points where X and the estimate are the same. So that corresponds when both of the plant and observer coincide. It needs to also collect the set of points where the plant jump first, but the observer has not jumped yet. So essentially this allows to have a little bit of a mismatch uh, because of the jump, uh, the plant jumping first. And the same situation for the um, situation where the observer jumps first because there is no essentially control which one's gonna do it first, okay? So that's essentially 
uh, how we can relate these states. And this um, telegraph A will be essentially the union of all these conditions. Okay? And, and that is uh, what, what we want to study. In certain conditions, and I will focus uh, a little bit on the talk uh, on this, this, this species can be removed when we actually have a capability to synchronize the observer with the jumps of the uh, calligraph H system. And sometimes, especially in the context of uh, challenges to make properties global, we might have a set of initial conditions for calligraph H and a set of initial conditions for the observer, and those are denoted calligraph X sub zero and hat calligraph X sub zero. Okay. So there are a number of challenges, and I have here a slide that um, somewhat summarizes many of the things that I said. And again, we are not saying that we can solve all of this. We solve certain problems with certain uh, assumptions. But you know, as I said, we need to de develop an algorithm that can uh, estimate a variable that evolves continuously and at times discreetly. There might be some discrete value. Uh, variables involved, which might be a little problematic because we need to do some sort of projection in the estimates of the estimates so that we get the right objects in the right space. Like imagine uh, estimating a logic variable. Okay. Um, typically, the jumps are not known in advance. So this is something that needs to be detected on the fly and that incurs typically a delay. And uh, the signals might not have its their own hybrid time domain. And um, one of the things that uh, and I provide a result about this is, is essentially uh, the need of detectability and the, and the right definition of detectability for this type of systems. Okay. So typically, uh, as I said, um, in, in general, using the estimation error, which is uh, what you see right here, excuse me, this should be hat, um, is not typically um, possible. So we need to find ways around it. But generally, the case where is possible is already interesting because, as you know, from the literature of switch systems, uh, combining two systems or two evolutions that have continuous and discrete behavior might, might, might throw some, some complexities to, to the problem. So here's an example. Imagine that you have uh, synchronized jumps between calligraph H and the observer, and we have linear F and G. So now we can build the error system with x hat uh, and x, and x hat is equal to chi. So we are in the same domain, uh, same space. And now we build the error system, which naturally will lead you to something like this. If you do the, the analysis, uh, it's very simple. Um, during flows, we have uh, e dot some h instance e and e plus some h instance e. So it is probably, if you have you know, observability, it is very tempting to now make these matrices to create contraction during flows and jumps. And the question is, is that enough? And, and, and the answer is actually no. Here's a simple example where we can choose these gains for the observer. Again, these are a standard Luenberger type of server for the flow, for the jumps. And you make these matrices to have, again, the, the typical contraction during flows and jumps, where it's unsure. But now what happens is that the overall net effect of this uh, evolution, especially when we have periodic jumps, is that the error would evolve according to this equation, OK? Which is again is again is another constant. Once you fix tau, which is the sampling time times c. So the question is: Is it always the case that when these two matrices are of this form, then that we will have a contraction on the error? And the answer is certainly no. Here is an example where we take these values, and there is an eigenvalue that might have a size that is larger than one uh, uh, in absolute value. So still, even though it seems like if you assume this, that the observer is synchronized, the problems go away. Actually, the problems do not go away. And the question is, how do we formulate this type of results for uh, as general as possible of a hybrid system? Yeah, Ricardo, can under I the, ask you a question here? Under the assumption of the synchronized observers. Uh, yes. So can we go ahead? Yeah. So do you have the answer to the question? If I modify the question, like, does there exist LC and LD? So if I so you picked a certain LC and LD for which the answer is no, right? Mm -hmm. And if I uh, put a quantifier that exists LC and LD such that um, it cannot be stabilized, do you have an answer to that question? We have not studied that. So okay. I'd be happy to discuss that. Okay. Moving on, um, we are now set in the case of the synchronized case. Okay, uh, again to understand the initial problem and then see how much we can learn from that. 
and this is work that has already been published. So we have here um, the revisit structure, and now what we have is when they are synchronized, as I said, the conditions when there is a mismatch in jumps that are essentially not there anymore. Um, we have that now the flow set for the entire interconnection is the flow set of my uh, Calibre FH system, and then for the observer, it can be anything. So that's the space for the observer and the same for the jump. So essentially the jumps and the flows are governed by the evolution of Calibre FH. So what we can do now is to think about under what conditions on the, um, on the hybrid Calibre FH system, we can guarantee uh, that the observer can be designed. And one of the things that we found useful is to say, rather than characterizing the data, to characterize the time of the jumps of the solutions. And some of this is inspired by uh, work in the switch systems literature, work by uh, Daniel and Joao and Andy and others, where you actually can put conditions on the domains of the solutions or the domain of, or, or the time of the jumps. So we define this closed subset calligraph I, which is a subset of the non-negative reals and a positive scalar tau star. Um, in the first pass, what we are looking at is a situation where we have that uh, with these TJs being the, the time of the jumps, um, this calligraph I set characterizes essentially the maximum uh, time in between consecutive jumps. Okay, so this is going to tell me essentially how far apart is one jump from the next jump, and that is part of uh, a model. And um, if this number, if this set has a lower bound that is larger than zero, then we have a dual time condition, as you can probably realize. Uh, we can also characterize or use the situation where we have the average dual time. And let me clarify here that Calligraph S sub H is a set of solutions of maximal solutions to my Calligraph H system that start from the initial set X zero. And the same happens we can do for the average dwell time, which will be useful for us when we have um, conditions that hold necessarily only during flows, but not necessarily during jumps. And then we can also do the same for reverse average dual time, where we have you know, a situation where the number of champs is lower bounded. So we have uh, a significant number of champs, and that will be useful when we have conditions that correspond to um, the, um, the, the jumps being nice and, and contracting, but the flows not necessarily so. So using some of our previous work on stability for general hybrid systems and uh, thinking about how would a general condition for um, asymptotic stability of the zero estimation error calligraph A will look like, here is one set of conditions, which is uh, requiring some important and, and maybe somewhat restrictive bounds, but it's very helpful in order to understand what the, the trade-off between is. The properties of the hybrid domain of the solutions to calligraph H, and then the conditions that we need. So certainly what you see right here is essentially the typical lower and upper bound, guaranteeing positive definiteness and radial unboundedness if these sets are unbounded of, uh, of a function V, which will serve as our certificate for the synthetic stability of the zero estimation error set. Um, but what you see right here is that the variation of this quantity over all possible directions of flow on the flow set of the entire interconnection is upper bounded by a constant times V. So this essentially gives us an exponential bound, not necessarily decreasing if AC is not negative. And similarly for the jumps. Okay? So with these conditions, now what we can do, and we have a similar result in our book with Rafael Gobel and Nitil without um, the relation to higher time domains that I'm going to present, where we have now um, a situation where what happens if the AC is negative and this is uh, of a different size. Okay, so now what we can show is that the problem for the observer for hybrid systems with synchronized jump uh, will be solved if some of the conditions uh, hold. One of them is AC is negative, and we have the condition that I mentioned to you, this is characterizing the time in between jumps with a minimum on that interval, assuming that the interval is compact, which is larger than this two constant ratio. Okay. So if that is the case, with AC negative, then we can actually solve the problem. And uh, again, we need to find a V. And certainly for the linear case of F and G, we might as well use a V quadratic 
and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, when we have AC negative and now we have an average dwell time, now we need to have the average parameter to have a similar type of uh, bound, lower bound. And the same thing we can do uh, when we have AD negative, now we can tolerate to some extent rapid jumps, but we shouldn't have that the system is allowed to flow too long unless this condition is satisfied and the same for the uh, reverse case. Okay? For the linear case, as I mentioned, this becomes somewhat uh, more tractable and familiar to all of us. Here we are thinking of a situation where uh, F and G are linear. Um, to some extent, abusing notation, we're assuming that the outputs um, uh, are maybe given by matrix HC and HD times X during flows and during jumps. This might, these matrices might be the same, so you might have a single output, but in some situations, the information that is available during flows is different than the information available during jumps. So we might put the generality there. And now you end up with a, essentially some sort of uh, Luenberger kind of choices for F hat and G hat for our observer. And what we obtain here is what we expect is essentially, it's a condition, it's a, a checkable condition, which gives rise uh, to these uh, matrix inequalities right here that uh, is obtained when we use uh, uh, essentially X hat minus X transpose P X hat minus X as the Lyapunov function. And now what we need to do is not only check the two inequalities that you see right here, um, and again, when there is some sort of detectability, this might be possible, uh, but also we need to make sure that on the calligraph I set of uh, times that we have, this condition holds. So we have the contraction that you would like to have. Okay. So as I said, uh, this is uh, a very useful for many applications result, um, but uses a P in both conditions. Uh, on the other hand, it allows corrections or innovation terms during flows and jumps. And this might be solvable if we have a detectability property. Here's one of the canonical examples, and this is essentially behind the juggling apparatus that I showed you earlier. And here you have a bouncing ball where um, we have uh, the interest of, of estimating the uh, position and velocity from measurements of position. And we have here situations where we have um, uh, the convergence for different settings of the calligraphy set, which is essentially the different. Uh, restitution coefficient parameters, okay? Okay, so um, as I said earlier, um, we might have a situation where none of these matrices are to some extent um, with the contraction, but again, the overall system is contracting. So here is, here is a situation that we, we are like really interested in understanding and motivated some of the other constructions that I will present. Here we have a system, a linear system, where, as you see here, we measure x1. And from x1, during flows, we can identify x2, perhaps, because it's observable, right, through, through x1 dot. But during jumps, we don't. On the other hand, um, during jumps, we have some coupling between x3 and x1. So maybe we can incorporate some information there, because x3 gets a reset to x1. If you measure x1, then we might be able to measure x3 at the next time around I come for, for jumping or flowing. So that's the, essentially the question is, if we have non-detectable continuous dynamics uh, in the traditional sense, and if we have non-detectable discrete dynamics, can we now have a detectable hybrid system? So this gives rise to some of the special cases that we developed. So uh, for again, for synchronized observers, one of them is when the continuous dynamics are, are detectable and persistent in the sense that there is some sort of average dwell time. Then we can define the um, F hat of the observer, essentially the observation strategy during flows using a continuous time observer, okay? And then for the jumps, we might just, just copy the dynamics of the plan. In other words, just pick the, a trivial uh, choice for the um, G hat, hat term uh, of my observer. And what we can do now is somewhat, when we have sufficiently large average dwell time, then we can get rid of the condition during jumps and just insist that the condition during flows holds, but now with AC being negative. And so that's natural to expect. Uh, and, and, and this condition will need to be satisfied with some uh, value. And another thing that we can do is to actually have 
a situation where we have now arbitrary average dwell time to design H hat. And for this, we need a little bit more of machinery. Essentially, what we need to be able to do is to um, have a large enough gain. So this is where high gain of service are very helpful. We would like to have that this uh, term um, constant AC that is on the bound of V dot is uh, negative enough or the absolute value is large enough. And then what we can do is to construct the innovation for the jumps using information about the um, transformation into a block diagonal observer for, for the observer. And that gives essentially rise to an observer that solves the problem for any um, parameter tau star for my average dual time. And here's a result. Uh, maybe for the interest of time, I will show the, the whole in one shot. So the idea is that if we have a compact set of initial conditions and then we have average dual time with some parameter tau star that are given, that's arbitrary. Then what we need to do is to have essentially um, a, a set of inequalities essentially during flows that has uh, this gain L appear in a very particular way. These are polynomial functions, uh, rational functions of L, C1 and C2. And then uh, we need to find this map T that is a continuous map, which as you probably imagine, this is what is gonna put the system in the block um, observable form. But we need to have a bound that essentially scales with the gain. Okay? And this is typically what happens we, we do uh, observer, uh, high gain observer. So in the case of high gain observer, what we have is that if we have that the pair F of the plant and the output of the plant that we measured in flows, which we call HC, if this pair is a strongly differentiable observable, then this map T can be constructed using uh, the standard form um, that you see right here. And this will be a continuous differentiable map. It will be an objective immersion. And then there can be a, form, a map phi that can be put um, uh, this observer into the form here in the high gain form with measurements only during flows where these uh, matrices are right here in this uh, uh, structure. And with that observer, uh, then we can actually solve the problem. So essentially, if you have a hybrid system for which there exists um, an average dwell time and you can design a high gain observer for the flows, then the problem can be solved. On the other hand, um, and maybe in a little more um, uh, of, of, a, of a counterpart, if you will, uh, the situation of the discrete dynamics can also be handled similarly. Um, if we have that the time between jumps is sufficiently small, then we can pick AD sufficiently negative with respect to AC, and, and this gives rise to our um, condition that we have uh, earlier with the uh, supremum on the calling of I set. And then we can do the same thing for a small reverse average all time. So um, maybe what is more interesting is the situation where we now have the linear case. So now what we will have when these conditions that I mentioned satisfy, essentially uh, we have the decrease during, in this case, during jumps, as you see right here, this is the discrete Lyapunov of equation. Then what we can do is to sign an observer that has zero gain during flows and guarantees the uh, asymptotic convergence property. Uh, now, one thing that is important, and this is something that we typically want to know is how is this related to observability and detectability? Well, it turns out that uh, this condition that you see up here is essentially related to a detectability of a discrete inclusion that you see right here. So that's, in my opinion, interesting in how to understand observability of the discrete inclusions. And then uh, similarly, using short complement and other tricks, uh, this condition that you see right here reduces to an LMI. So it's nice and constructive, okay? Uh, and similar kind of uh, situations can be, can be handled in the setting of um, flow-based observer, uh, non-linearities and such. Let me jump with the time I have to the key problem, the case where we have no synchronization between the plant and the observer. And this is important because certainly there might be a little mismatch 
And that little mismatch might essentially throw off the error and might not allow us to converge uh, as we expect. So the question is, how do we design uh, an observer? And can we, one of the things that we started looking at initially, can we use some sort of nominal robustness? So the idea is, suppose that I design an observer, assuming that I know when uh, the jumps of the, of the calligraphic system occur. Can I now say something about the situation when that uh, information is not available, but I know a little bit later, in other words, a little bit after, maybe very, very small, but at least something. Uh, and that is something that connects us to nominal robustness. So this is um, a slide that summarizes essentially what we mean by general perturbations of a hybrid system. If I give in a hybrid system with flow set C, essentially what this is doing through a function rho is inflating that set uh, by a size rho of X around it. Uh, if I give in a flow map F, then it's inflating the directions of flow and the values that you might take on its argument. So it's essentially creating an, an inflation of these objects. Uh, here's a picture that describes how the flow set is being inflated. And what we have done again, uh, in previous work is that if I have a set that is compact and asymptotically stable for a hybrid system that satisfies the conditions I mentioned earlier, the hybrid basic conditions, then what happens is that there is a small enough row such that we have this semi-global practical property for the same set. In other words, we will have semi-globally that the solutions to my system calligraph H will converge to essentially to a neighborhood of calligraph A if they exist for a very long time. And, and this is essentially one good step, but it doesn't give us a lot about uh, what happens when you know, the information is delayed by jumps. So a couple of years ago, um, with one of my posters, we developed a result which actually gives this robustness to the laser jumps. So the idea is given a hybrid system and a parameter TD that defines the largest delay after a jump, what we can do is to add a timer to capture the delay, to add a memory state, to actually memorize the value of the state that would have been used right now when the jump occurs, and then use it later when the timer expires, okay? So essentially the dynamics of what we call an augmented system that we will use to analyze how the stability property of the original system translates to corresponds to the following. If my Calibraph H system has a jump, then store the new value of the state X in a memory state, launch a decreasing timer for an initial condition in zero to capital TD. The timer will decrease. When timer reaches zero, what I'm going to do is to reset the state X to what I memorized before, okay? So then I can somewhat um, play with how long this uh, delay occurs on the effective implementation of the jump, okay? And what happens in this work is that if I have a compact set that's not really stable for hybrid system with hybrid basic conditions, then the augmented system HTD has a set that is semi-global practical robust, present to be stable with respect to the parameter. So with that, uh, and, and this is uh, already published, with that, we actually, with Pauline, uh, we apply this to the case of the observers when we have already an observer design for the synchronized case. So suppose that now we have the condition of um, calligraph A with a minimum on the calligraph A larger than zero, essentially it's saying that we have a dual time property. Now we augment the system with this state, uh, mu and tau, where mu corresponds to the memory, tau corresponds to the timer that will create or implement the, the delays. And now I have an interconnection that uh, essentially has a, a, a mu variable that remains constant during flows, a timer that counts down appropriately. And then whenever the timer um, uh, expires, sorry, excuse me, whenever the jump of the plant occurs, then what happens is that the memory of the, um, the memory state of the system stores the information of the new jump and the timer gets reset to a new value between zero and TD. And if it is zero, there is no delay. Uh, but anyhow, after the timer expires, which is when this condition is here, uh, holds, then what I have is I use the memory state to actually reset the estimate uh, or the state of my observer. And with that being said, 
and this is uh, currently under review, but it's also available on Hull, is that if I have the um, uh, calligraphy to be compact, which is an important assumption, and interconnection satisfied have the basic conditions, which is property on the data of the system, then using the ideas from our previous work, then we recover uh, to some extent, uh, semi-globally and practically the stability property of, uh, of the calligraphy set. In other words, we get uh, convergence to approximate values of the actual um, uh, state of the plant with the estimates. Okay. So, so that's about one way to go about this. Another way to go about this is to tackle the problem, the full problem directly. Okay. So we have good news and we actually have a particular case for which we can do that. And the particular case is right here. We we'll consider to start a flow map and jump map that are linear, okay? And no structure in C and D, and right now. And then we assume that there exists essentially this tau mean and a compact set such that for each solution to, esti to be estimated this essentially at all time. And we have a compact set calligraph X where the solutions remain for all time, okay? So with that information, we also assume that we have that the pair ACH is observable. So we can actually control essentially the speed of, of, of decay or the contraction during flows. And, and that is one way to, to go about because this allows us to create an arbitrary fast observability flows. However, what happens is the problem at hand, which is unavoidable, is that if this is my estimate and this is my plant state, uh, when let's say the estimate resets first because it's using um, reaching that uh, sooner, right? Then what, what happens is that this um, reset might create a long transient because the plant essentially was back here. So initially start going down towards where the plant was, but all of a sudden the plant jumps and then I get all this transient. So this is not very satisfactory for us. So what we came up with is a way to actually guarantee that nearby the jump set, we have essentially that the solutions to the plant are with some behavior that is characterized. So essentially, if we start uh, a delta zero away from the jump set, then this system will flow away from the jump set for some time and reaches the time, reaches the set D at some time. Okay, so that is uh, something that we need. Uh, we have a condition that we cannot flow from D. So essentially there is a, a transversality condition right there. And, and that there is also some uniform time that the solutions after the jump will not essentially um, reach the jump set again. So this construction is something that I won't present today, but I would like to invite you to attend uh, Pauline's talk at the upcoming CDC on Thursday. And it's a, essentially it's a local result. It gives us a local construction of the observer and provides one of the, in my opinion, uh, only observers that do not really assume synchronization and works for a particular class of systems. And we're currently extending that to the case where the right-hand side of the plant is uh, nonlinear as well. And um, to wrap up, and I know I'm probably running a little bit late, let me just say that one of the things that we wanted to understand in general for general non necessarily synchronized observers for hybrid systems is how do we go about the understanding of uh, necessary conditions, in particular detectability. So if you're familiar with this notion, which I'm sure many of you are, if you have a continuous time system, as you see right here, and um, if you have an observer for it, like in the question seven, seven is an observer for six, then what happens is that if you have the solutions are complete and you have that any solution to seven, an input uh, is defined and satisfies this limit, which is essentially, this is an observer, okay, these are the necessary or, or, or the, the requirements for seven to be an observer. Then what happens is that what you can say is that, um, I have an asymptotic detectability property. What do I mean by that? I mean that if I have two solutions to the plant, six, XA and XB, with the same outputs called YA and YB for all time, then what happens is that these two signals in error converge to zero. So what happens is that under some regularity, 
the existence of server implies the detectability property, both for the continuous time case and for the discrete time case. So for us, the question has been, can we come up with a similar type of result for the hybrid case in general, not necessarily for synchronized, desynchronized, non-synchronized observers? So the answer is yes. So we extended the notion of detectability to hybrid system edge so that we have the detectability being necessary. And the notion itself covers the case of continuous and discrete time systems. Now, one caveat is the fact that now solutions might not be uh, extended for all T or for all J because we have Zeno. So that needs to be treated carefully. And we did that. And this was a, a published uh, last year, the CDC 2020. And it says that if H admits an observer relative to calligraph A on an initial set of conditions, then H is an asymptotically detectable, um, is asymptotically detectable in, in the right notion. And, and the right notion is going to require some naturally some reparameterization of the solutions to the system, because now I need to pick two solutions, XA and XB to calligraph H. And those two solutions might have not necessarily the same hybrid time domain. We would like them to have the same span during flow, but the J might be different. In other words, we might have jumps that occur at different times. So we have this idea of reparameterization which is something I won't have time to tell you about, but we can reparameterize the solutions to hybrid systems using um, notion of solutions. And that's necessary in our opinion to understand how to design observers, how to guarantee detectability. And the approach is to treat essentially the um, plant or the Cali H system and the observers and interconnection of two systems and make sure that we can reparameterize them. And this also has already been published. So with that being said, I'd like to wrap up right on time, surprisingly for our uh, talk. Uh, certainly I presented some of the elements of hybrid systems and mentioned what the observer problem is uh, in general, provides some sufficient condition for particular cases, especially when it's synchronized and some recent results on the not necessarily synchronized. Uh, I, I hope that you attend the talk at the CDC uh, coming up on the local case. Uh, and there are ways to actually think about maybe making it global. Uh, we're very excited about this. So thank you for your attention.